All right, everyone, let's get started. Um, uh, so welcome to our webinar today. Um, today, uh, we're, do we're, doing, um, we're starting off our first webinar of 2018 a little bit differently. Um, we'll be, uh, I'll be assisted, or Drew will be actually presenting a um, NAV payroll solution to you today. Um, in a couple of minutes, we'll get started with that. Um, just some housekeeping to start. Everybody's on mute um, uh, because we're actually recording the webinar. So if you actually have any questions, you can type them into your chat or question panel um, in the GoToWebinar, and then we'll address those um, throughout the presentation or at the end. Okay, so this is our, our um, for those of you who have joined us before, this is our BC ERP Unlocked webinar series. Um, so the webinars you see on the screen here are all the ones we covered in, in 2017. So we've covered off a lot of uh, territory. Um, and these are all our webinars are recorded and placed up on our website. Um, so if you want to um, check out those webinars, if you missed any of those, um, I'll give you that link at the end and you can go on and uh, watch the recordings. And in 2018, we're starting off today with uh, NAV payroll. Um, and in February, we'll go into NAV 2018. And then you can see we'll be bringing in some of our partners to actually uh, present some of their solutions to you along the lines of our presentation today with NAV payroll. Um, and then presenting some of our additional uh, BCERP uh, functionality. If you have any ideas for webinars as well and things you'd actually like to see, um, my, I'll give you my email address at the end and you can, um, you can reach out to me and say, you know, I'd really like to see um, a session on this specific functionality. Okay, so today we'll be talking um, about NAV payroll. So NAV Payroll um, is a easy to use, as you can see, cost-effective solution for, uh, for payroll in NAV. This is not um, an, an add-in or, um, or, or a separate system that actually interfaces to NAV. This is built within the NAV code base. Um, so it looks to your users exactly like any other functionality within NAV. And the nice part of that is it's built within NAV and the same um, uh, code base and it's upgradable and things like that. You don't have to deal with all the interface points and things like that. So we'll be reviewing some of, um, some of the features of NAV payroll in this session, as you can see here. And um, I'll let Drew take that in a couple of minutes. Um, so a little bit about our presenter. Um, so I have Drew Winborn on the call with me. So I'll let Drew um, introduce himself um, and talk about some of the uh, some of his past history with NAV and um, and how we came to be where we are today with NAV payroll. So Drew, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi everyone. Um, I uh, worked for um, Holy Guacamole, as you can see there on the slide, um, until we um, sold our uh, company to Hormel, and I was the finance finance director there. Um, I had always uh, uh, was really impressed with the functionality of NAV, especially on the costing side, um, have, being able to have, you know, actual cost, especially with material costing that was as volatile as our uh, main raw material of avocado uh, was was a great, you know, gave us a great competitive advantage in the industry. However, we always um, did payroll in-house and we did, couldn't really find a solution for uh, Microsoft NAV. So, uh, we continued to run parallel with Mass, but um, I always had to keep outside uh, databases and access and things like that to capture my labor costing and apply it to the material cost that was in NAV to get to a gross margin number um, and do uh, profitability analysis. So that kind of was uh, the impetus for um, thinking about a payroll solution that um, you know not only would be uh, the ability to do payroll in NAV, which was a need in the in the NAV community, but also uh, to be able to roll up your cost with direct labor involved um, so you can get to a true gross margin uh, right there in your ERP system. All right. Thanks so much, Drew. You bet. Kurt, do you want me to, do you have more slides or did you want me to go into the demo now? Yeah, so I just want to talk about like sort of what is NAV payroll. Are you going to talk about that in, in your slides or I can switch right over to you if you'd like? No, go ahead. No, keep going. Um, so what is NAV payroll? So um, as I mentioned in that um, intro slide, it is built within NAV code, the code base. It's not a bolt-on or a standalone solution you got to interface to. It is, um, it is built with flexibility at its core. So, it, you know, finance, as, as you know, um, can be a real pain across, multi, across state lines, across different counties and states and things like that with all of the differing requirements, as well as what's required by the federal government as well for reporting. Um, 
the uh, NAV payroll solution features automatic tax table updates as well, um, so that you can actually bring in those um, those those tax updates automatically. You're not having to monitor that and update those on your own. Um, as Drew mentioned, it does also feature some advanced labor costing functionality that he's going to show uh, with posting to the item ledger. And it is secure and very easy to use and built within NAV. Okay, so before we jump into the demo, I'm just going to switch over to, um, to Drew and let him be the presenter. Um, so Drew will talk a little bit um, about um, some of the features, of uh, additional features of NAV payroll that he's going to uh, review and then jump right into the solution itself. Thanks, Kirk. Yeah, I'll uh, get to the demo in just one second. I just wanted to touch on a couple of things um, that, uh, you know, uh, the majority of, um, or a lot, I wouldn't say, I don't know if it's the majority, but there's plenty of NAV users out there, companies that are manufacturers or distributors, um, and usually labor accounts for a pretty big chunk of their cost structure. On average, it's 25%, but it definitely can be more or less depending on what your material cost is. Um, so with that big chunk of cost out there in mind. Um, you know, we wanted to not only be able to bring payroll to you, but add value um, where you can analyze profitability, including labor, as I mentioned before. Um, so we, hopefully with NAV payroll implemented, you can start to um, have better clarity and answer questions about how much you should charge for items and how much profit you're generating when you consider labor into the picture. Um, and uh, and then that also you know will allow you to nav payroll will post directly to your item ledger so you can get your gross margins right there um, from the item ledger without having to pull a bunch of numbers together. Um, Kirk already went over uh, most of this. The only things uh, to touch on here probably are that uh, the, we do have a jobs module integration. So anyone using the jobs module, um, you can record time uh, with job and task numbers and then um, post that over to the job um, to the job ledger uh, directly from the payroll system. So you're not having to double, double capture through time cards and resources and then also in the payroll system, you would be able to bring that directly over from the payroll system, which we can uh, show that in the demo. And then dimensions, um, if you're a heavy user of dimensionality, you know, where you're capturing several dimensions per uh, cost item, or sometimes you could even divide up, um, you know, a certain cost into multiple dimension values underneath one dimension code. We do have that ability. So you can tag your labor to, you know, several different projects, for example, um, depending on what project they happen to be working on at that time. Uh, we also have some easy kind of user-friendly, uh, functionality, um, the reverse transactions button um, from the payroll ledger or from the posted payroll document will allow you to reverse every transaction that that document posted. So uh, payroll can be, you know, a little bit complex with all the withholdings and, um, you know, you're withholding money from a check and then you're booking that to a vendor or GL code to pay later, um, usually to, you know, either the IRS or a state uh, government. So, um, to, to reverse all of that it would be quite a pain, especially if there was multiple documents involved. So we've created the reverse transactions button where you can pick a range of documents or just one document and reverse everything that had to do with that document at one time uh, without having to go through and check every ledger. <clears throat> also, Painless Payday Premium Service. Uh, that's what we call our service to file your um, deposits for uh, state income tax, federal income tax, and to file your forms. Um, so if you want uh, to have all the visibility of, you know, your employees and your um, the hours worked and the payroll ledger with all the, you know, entries from cutting the checks or from the ACH file direct deposit, if you want to have all that visibility in NAV, but um, the thought of filing all the forms and doing the deposits every week, you know, is not something that you want to deal with. We do provide a service that we charge uh, based on the number of employees where we'll do the deposits and follow forms for you, but then you would be um, just putting in employees and running payroll each week in NAV, which would give you all um, the visibility uh, we just talked about into your, your not only your labor costs, but just anything that, you know, if an auditor needs a piece of documentation about how much you withheld for 401k or whatever it may be, you know, all of that stuff would be right there at your fingertips uh, because it's inside your ERP system. So with that, we will take a tour. 
So Drew, just Drew qu one question before we get started. What versions does Nav Payroll work on for Nav? Just just so all of our users, because I think we have some people on there that are on different versions of Nav. So what versions do you support with Nav Payroll? Uh, we're 2013 R2 and up through 2017, and we'll have um, our uh, solution built as an extension in 2018. Uh, within the next few months. So we'll we'll be ready for 2018. We're taking a little more time than normal with 2018 because we're not just upgrading the objects, we're uh, gonna build it out as an extension. Perfect, thanks. Mm -hmm. So here's our uh, role center, as Kirk mentioned. Um, if you go to departments, NAV payroll just is a department that's inside here of NAV, uh, looks like anything else um, inside the NAV system. So We'll take a quick tour through an employee card here. Uh, I'm not gonna touch on every field because uh, most are self-explanatory here, but we do have a few that I'd like to mention. So we have um, email that you can send a uh, email check stub to if you uh, choose to direct deposit and then email check stubs out. Um, we have a labor division code and a labor uh, global cost application. I'll go into this uh, more later, but the idea here is that uh, we wanted to create an easy way for people to capture their labor costs into different buckets. So if you have someone that's in, like a plant manager, you can tag them all. If all they do is production, you can tag them to production. Or if they do a combination of two or three of these tasks, you can tag them to two of three. Now, this is kind of the easiest way on uh, labor to capture it because all you do is just pick an option here on the employee card and then they're part of all those transactions, whether they be production orders or uh, receiving documents or shipping documents or a combination of uh, two of those. Um, but then we have more detailed ways to capture it. So you can make employee groups that you tag to a work center and then those that group would be on any production orders that go through the work center. Um, or you can even tag individual employees to production orders if you wanted to get that granular and down to that level of detail. But we wanted to make something that was easy to use, um, easy to start with um, in a simple way. So if you wanted to start with this and then get more detailed and start putting employee groups on documents later, you could certainly do that. Um, so there's several options of how to use the labor costing uh, and, you know, he, depending on what you know, fits your company, we, we should have an option that will work for you. Um, manager user ID, uh, this is important because of our web portal. So we have a web portal where I'll go ahead and log in as an employee, and I am the manager of this employee. So, sorry, I had to refresh. Okay. So I can request um, PTO hours here. So I can request vacation, sick time, or any earnings code that's marked as a PTO. So if I request uh, time here, then I can um, add the line of time and then my manager is gonna be able to see it. And that's all set up here through the employee card with the login and password that goes into the web portal. So I can log into the web portal with that. And then the manager ID is going to dictate what manager gets to see that PTO time request. And then they can either um, decline that or accept that, uh, which we'll show here in a second. As we move down here, you, you can see that we have some personal information, um, federal uh, withholding information. The only thing really to touch on here is that uh, you can change the bonus withholding percent based on the employee. So you don't have to have a global one, or you can have a global one that fits for everyone, except if an employee wants to hold 40 or 50% or something on bonuses, you can change it here and that will override the, the global percentage. Um, we have our direct deposit information here, so you can line up several accounts. You could have several savings accounts and then a checking account um, for the rest. And the salary information right here is going to all come from the salary table. So you can have, um, any of these pay cycles here listed, uh, which are all the major ones. And then you can also have separate starting, starting dates for different salaries, so you don't have to remember to come in here and change it right on a certain day. Um, we can also use hours detail, which means that 
that employee, you're going to enter hours or import hours for that employee. And then the system's going to use that hours detail to generate the payroll document. Um, the only thing over in the state uh, section here that I'd like to mention is that um, we do have uh, dynamic captions here to make it real easy for the user. When they're entering um, different withholdings for different employees, like if we look at a employee from California, you'll see that they have uh, separate captions here that match the W-4, the state's W-4. Um, whatever language they use in the W-4, we try to use here just to make it very simple for the user to know where to put um, the withholding or deduction allowances. Um, so deductions, let's move on to that. You can just line them up down the page here. So no matter how, how many you have, you just go down the page and add them. Uh, you can make them a percent of gross, percent of net or fixed amount. And if there is an employer contribution, you would just check it off here and put in the employer contribution code. And then that way the system knows that not only are you going to deduct, but then the employer is going to add um, some to that, depending on the setup over here on this side of the screen. Uh, PTO hours, we have a lot of options here in the PTO hours. So you can um, accrue hours. So every payroll document that's posted, it would accrue the appropriate amount of PTO. Or you can lump sum the hours. So you can use um, the lump sum, add 40 hours or 80 hours and then just run the accrual journal for all the lump sums and add them at the beginning of the year, which when you add them, it'll automatically change the anniversary date for you. Um, so either way you like to, um, you know, give PTO hours to your employees. Uh, we have both options available here and you can set it to allow negative hours or not. And you can also set up hours limits. So if you want to accrue up to 80 or up to 160, whatever it may be, you put in the limit here and then it will not accrue past that. Um, create PTO hours from template. So we have a lot of um, functionality in here that just makes it easy and quick to set up employees. This is one of those where you can just create a template like this labor division of shipping. They all get the same PTO hours. So you would just come in here, pick shipping, um, hit OK, and then the PTO hours is going to populate uh, with the template that's been set up for shipping. Same thing for deductions. So we can add deductions with a template as well. All right, that's about it for the um, employee card for now. I'll be glad to come back to it and answer questions if there are any. Um, but now I wanna take you over to some of the setups. So I wanna show that we have um, a time clock cross reference. So pretty much we can take any time clock file, whether it be text, CSV, and Excel, and import it without a ton of development to get that done. So if you're using a time clock and you want to keep it, uh, we can cross-reference the employees to the numbers in the time clock. We can also set up um, the Excel column letter that it's going to come over in uh, by earnings code. So if you have a time clock that spits out your, your time in separate columns in Excel or in a CSV, uh, we can actually link them here and cross-reference them. So this is just to show that we don't have to spend a bunch of time developing imports for time clocks. We pretty much already have the cross-reference uh, developed. Um, we also have another cross-reference uh, that would be like more of a down the page time clock. So I'm going to import this file and I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, I have some holiday, regular time, double time, and some jobs over here. So I'm going to import this time with jobs. Go ahead and import this. And then let me show you a little bit about the earnings rate table since that had some double time. We have a lot of um, flexibility around our earnings codes. So you can make an earnings code that is a multiplier off of the regular rate. So this one's going to be a two times multiplier off of the regular rate and start and have a starting date and ending date to that earnings code, or you can leave these blank and that would just always apply. But this is exactly like the sales price table, same type functionality where you can pick all employees, labor division, posting group, or single employee. So you can pick a group of employees that it applies to, apply it to everyone, or just pick an individual. Um, you can also make it a fixed rate hourly or piece rate, or you can make it a multiplier. So 
Um, tons of flexibility around this table. This pretty much can handle any earnings requirement, whether you have like a double shift that you give, you know, um, a, a 1.75 times regular earnings or whatever it may be. Um, we can we can handle it here with the earnings rate table. We had a double time on that one that I imported. So I'm gonna go over here and just start processing the payroll document. Now, normally you would never process a payroll document, you know, on its own, most likely. You would always do it in a batch. So we'll certainly do that. Um, but just to show you what the full document looks like, I wanted to go ahead and just do one. So this is off of the hours that we imported. So this employee is set up to use the hours detail. Um, you can see here that the double time automatically came in and doubled the rate because of the earnings rate table that I just showed. All the jobs and tasks came in automatically as well. Um, had some regular time, had some overtime, and had some holiday. This all came in from the import and then um, automatically generates the correct amount of deductions, withholdings, and all the um, other things that are related to payroll taxes that you must pay. Um, so from here, I'm just going to print the check so you can see what our check looks like. Um, so we have you know, a stub with your PTO hours. All of these numbers and captions and everything can be completely moved around very easily. They're all part of a, a very large array of um, that you can uh, easily manipulate. So if you have a payroll check that you wanna continue using, we can certainly um, adhere to that. Here's the check part of it, and then we also have a stub on the bottom. Um, even if you need to move uh, you know, one stub to the middle and your check actually is supposed to be on top, that's really easy to do because of the way that we've developed this uh, payroll check. So now that the check is um, cut, we can post this. Now I wanna go back to um, when I requested some PTO time, I wanna show that see now that's showing up here in this hours approval. So I'm the manager of this employee. So what I would see here is all the different amount of time that my employees have requested off um, in this screen. And I can select and decline or approve. Um, you can see over here, I also have the information I need to make this decision. I have the hours that they currently have accrued and I have the projected year end hours. So I have everything I need over here um, in order to make you know, the decision of whether to decline or not. I also have some year-to-date hours, some future hours that are gonna be accrued and how much is projected to be accrued with um, this being, if I go ahead and approve this, with that being approved, how much they'll have left. So tons of information just all on this one screen for the managers to use. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and select and approve this. All right. Now that I've approved that, before I run the batch payroll, I do want to take you over here to the employee portal and just show you a couple other pieces of functionality that are in here. Uh, the, the hours details is exactly like the PTO request, but this would be for if you wanted employees to enter their hours. And you, as you can see here, you can put dimensions or jobs on them. And then that this also would show up for manager approval. Um, and then they could approve the time and that would be brought into the payroll document. If time isn't approved, but there's times out, there's some time outstanding there that's not approved, it will bring the payroll processor a message saying that there's time out there that has not been approved by a manager so that they know that, um, you know, they need to check with that manager and see why they haven't approved that time. Um, posted payroll processing, this is just so that you can send your old um, check stubs to yourself or to another email address so that way you're not having to go to the payroll processor to ask for check stubs. Um, accrual request history, you can see here that I just approved this. Um, you can see the time right here that I've approved it, uh, the day that it's been approved for and what type of earnings code it is. You can also see that I declined one uh, back on uh, in 2017. So there's history here for the employee. There's also hours remaining, PTO hours remaining and projected year end hours here. Uh, for the employee to use. Um, so they have that information without having to ask for it. Okay, let's move on to batch payroll. This is how you would normally process payroll.
So the first employee I processed was a weekly pay period. These are going to be semi-monthly. I just want to show that we do have, you know, many options for pay cycles. These are all going to be direct deposit employees. So you can see here this four vacation that I approved for Kevin Costner has come in automatically because it's been approved by the manager. So the payroll processor doesn't have to worry about that. Um, those will automatically come in. Holiday time also, we have a payroll calendar. So you can set up all your holiday time in advance and that'll come in um, automatically. Um, also, if you need to add sick or something that hasn't been approved by a manager, we try to make this batch payroll screen um, just as easy as it possibly can be um, for adding, you know, PTO time or whatever it may be and running payroll directly from here. So if I add two hours of sick time here, you can see when I go to the payroll document, it's actually inserted that time. It's taken it away from regular time and made it part of sick time. If I go here and put it back to zero, everything recalcs and the sick timeline um, disappears. So from the batch screen, what you're doing is actually inserting and removing lines and all the payroll document is being, um, is automatically being recalculated to reflect that change. So you're not having to bounce around from line to line, manually changing things. It's all right here for you. And in a perfect world, you would have, you know, the vacation and sick come in automatically from the uh, PTO time. Uh, but of course, you still, you know, there's going to be a lot of times where you still have to do things in the batch. And that's why we've made it as easy as possible. Um, I'm going to actually try to send the email check stubs without doing the ACH file, just so I can show you what happens. So you get this check number uh, must have a value error. And this really is a good place for me to lead into um, our online manuals. So if you go to our website and hit manual, um, we have logins and passwords that we can give to uh, customers. So you would go from there to a login screen. I'm already logged in, so it just bounced me right in. Um, but what I want to show here is that we have most all setups, if not all, um, listed here with nice red boxes around the buttons and exactly what you're supposed to do and uh, critical notes as well. So this is a great resource while we're implementing or after you start running payroll and you just forget about one thing, how to, how to add an accrual time or PTO time or whatever it may be you can come here to the uh, online manual and search for it. And it's great for errors. So that was a check number error. Um, so I'm just gonna search for check number. And you can see right here, the first error that comes up is check number must have a value in payroll header, which is the error I got. So there's the error, um, but it doesn't really say much. The error um, is a uh, just a standard nav test fill error. So it doesn't say much about what I need to do to fix it. It just tells me, you know, there's a problem. So here, what we've done is we've added that you haven't, most likely haven't exported or you haven't printed your check. So this tells you right here exactly what it is you need to do in order to alleviate this error. So I'm gonna come back here, hit export. Now all my, um, everything's been exported into an ACH file and I'm gonna be able to email all my check stubs. Okay, so those emails will go out to the employee uh, email addresses that are on their employee cards. Um, you don't have to do it this way. Of course, you can print checks. Uh, it's not a problem at all. But um, if you wanna do ACH and um, print check stubs, you can do it that way as well. Uh, so we have a print check stub at the top. So you could just give your employees a, you know, a check that's been voided with a stub and then they would have the direct deposit go into their account. Um, but if you want to do email check stubs, we certainly have that ability. And this is what um, our email check stubs look like. So we have uh, a nice check stub here with the remittance advice number. That's what's going to be on the transaction in the bank. Uh, you can see all four of those just came through that I just did. So back here, they've all been um, the check printed and check stub emailed both get checked off and I can transmit to the ACH file for my bank and post. Okay, so that's pretty much, you know, running a payroll batch. It usually can be done in the matter of, of minutes, um, kind of depending on how much, you know, uh, PTO time you have to go through and adjust. But 
if the managers are approving it and everything, it should just be running the batch, printing the checks, or creating the ACH file and posting. All right, I'm gonna go, now that we've done an individual document and done a batch, I'm gonna go to the setups. So I definitely wanna emphasize, um, you know, the ease of the setups. Um, one thing that we tried to do is make it simple um, to set up a code and make it, you know, exempt from any taxes it might be exempt from. So you can see in our payroll setups, uh, it's very similar to other NAV, you know, code setup. You set up a code, give it a description, and then if it's exempt from federal withholding, Social Security, Medicare, state, or if it's a garnishment, you just check off a box. Um, so there isn't anything that you have to do with certain orders of deductions or orders of withholdings or anything like that. It's just um, you come in here, for example, you know, 401k is going to be exempt from federal withholding, but you have to pay FICA, these two on it. Uh, in health insurance is exempt from FICA and from um, federal most of the time. So we've checked off those three boxes. So when you set up a code, um, you can easily make it exempt and it's easy to set up new codes. You just set up the new code and tell the system whether it's going to be earnings deduction, withholding, or employer tax. Um, I've already mentioned the templates, but I'll show you what those look like. So if you have some admin people and they always get this amount of PTO time per year by earnings code here, you can set them up in a template, shippings down here. And then as I showed you on the employee card, you can just apply those templates instead of entering every line. Same thing with deductions. We have some deductions that we always give admin staff and deductions we always give shipping. So I have set up those in templates. All right. And we can move on to uh, posting setups. I won't go too far through this, but the main point here is that it's the standard way that NAV um, does posting. So it's very familiar um, to, it, you know, whether you're setting up an item product group or a customer business group. It's the same type thing. You pick your account type, whether it be GL bank vendor, you pick your um, vendor or GL number. You can see here that all my earnings are tied to GL codes, uh, but my withholdings and deductions, a lot of them are going to be tied to vendors because I want them, I want, you know, my federal income tax to post directly to the vendor that I'm going to pay when I do my deposit um, every week or every month, whatever it may be. So come in here, pick vendor, um, choose your vendor from the list, just like you would anywhere else in there. All right. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, we do offer the service that will um, do the EFTPS and the state, if applicable, the state income tax deposit and file the 941s and the quarterly forms, 940s at the end of the year. Uh, we do offer that service. So if you want to have all of this in your your ERP system, but you don't want to deal with the forms, um, we can certainly do that. All right, now that we've gone through some payroll processing, uh, let's go to some of the added value pieces that you get by having that big chunk of your cost structure inside your ERP system. So we can see here in the item ledger, what I've done is I have um, singled out a few transactions just to make it easy to read where you can see your labor cost that's associated with the purchase, the output, and the sale. So here we have the purchase. We can see who was involved with that. We can see that Harrison Ford was involved with it, and he's involved with all transactions. So he might be the warehouse manager or the plant manager. All transactions are gonna um, have a piece of cost um, with Harrison Ford's payroll. And these are coming directly from the payroll system. So this is based on actual payroll, whether there be overtime or double time, whatever's in the act, you know, actually the cost impacted to the company um, is, is what is used in these, because now that you have this, you know, wonderful information of how much um, each employee is costing you every payroll period, then it's really easy to use that information for analysis purposes. And um, you can also check off a box in the setup table to make it fully loaded. So if you want to add employer contributions and employer taxes to these calculations, you can just check it off that you want um, those to be part of the cost burden that's in this analysis. Um, so you can see here that he cost us, you know, 0.08 per unit. Um, James Franco cost us 0.01 uh, 
uh, eight per unit. That's because he's only part of receiving transactions and Harrison Ford's part of all. So that's why he's got much less cost per unit. But then you can see the total cost on this transaction. So there was 50,000 labor units and these labor units can be anything. So in the, again, in the NAV setup table, there's a setting for what is your labor unit? So it's kind of how do you view labor in your world? Do you view it, you know, by pound, by kilo, by hour? Um, and then those labor units would just be, that unit of measure would be put on the items. So this item takes, you know, two hours to make. So that would be the labor unit that's put on the item um, through the standard item unit of measure table. So nothing special there. Just you would have a labor unit of measure that you tagged your items. And like I said, it could be whatever it is that you think is the you know most beneficial for your analysis. And then uh, you can calculate your labor units off of that. So these are the total cost on this transaction. You can see the total cost here on output. There was actually two production employees that worked on this. And then we had Harrison Ford again, because he's part of everything. And you can see their cost per unit. So you can see, uh, you know, during this payroll period, how much was my cost of this employee um, per labor unit is real easy to identify there. And then you can see their total cost on this transaction. And then what's interesting about the sale entries is, we have um, the sale entries look the same when you click in here on the detail, but then we also have an additional piece of information. This total cost of goods sold labor cost will tell you the total amount of receiving production and shipping costs on this transaction. So you, instead of having to go through and try to figure out how much receiving and how much output and production cost was on a transaction that you sold, it's gonna automatically roll that up into one number for you so that you have your gross margin right here. And then these, all these labor costs that are in the item ledger can be turned on or off as to whether they roll up into the actual cost of the item. So if you want them to roll up just like the material cost does and hit your balance sheet, you can um, turn that on. If you don't want that, if you just want this for gross margin analysis purposes and you don't want actually the labor costs to go with that item material cost onto the balance sheet and then through cost of goods sold, you can turn it off. So you would still have your analysis ability here in the ledger, but you wouldn't be booking all that labor cost to the balance sheet if you didn't want to do it that way. Um, so again, a lot of flexibility there. Uh, you can kind of decide how you want to administer this and it should give you a ton of uh, visibility into you know your your prof your profits by item or or even by transaction here. Um, another piece on the labor cost front uh, that I want to mention is that we do integrate with the job ledger. So we have this transfer payroll to job ledger. Um, you can see here this was the original document I imported with the uh, he worked on this job 20 task 10 and then the rest were on job 10 task 10. But the interesting thing here that I want to point out is that you can see the actual numbers that came over from his payroll document. That was the double time, that was the overtime, and here's the regular time. So we can bring the, this information directly over to the job ledger and post it against a job. Um, so when you're doing analysis of you know, your profitability of how much you build out for this employee on the job versus how much he actually spent working on the job, it's really easy to do that because you have your you have your actual cost here uh, from the payroll system. Um, the last piece of um, value add, you know, of having all your payroll in NAV, I would say, is going to be the ability to add dimensions. So I'm just going to run our payroll document here. So you can add dimensions across the line, just like anywhere else in NAV. But the um, really interesting part here is we have a dimension allocation. So if you had him working 40 hours and then 46 hours on two separate projects, you can put in here 40, say you worked on this project for 40, and then 46.66 worked on this project. So, and then when it posts this document, it's actually going to post it across those two, um, these two dimensions. So it's going to split the general ledger entry by dimension even though that it's these two dimension values are underneath the same dimension code, you can split one line into two dimensions. And then of course you can have your global dimensions on the line that you can add and all the other uh, great dimension um, ability that you have with NAV. 
Um, the only other things I think that I had wanted to mention were that, uh, you know, as I think Kirk touched on it, we do have a tax table that's in the, um, it's in our cloud database and we set up a job on the customer side to run every night to refresh their tax table. So there's no uploading, downloading, or, you know, manually entering any taxes. Those will come from our table. Um, because of how streamlined that is, uh, we were actually just a week ago today, last Thursday, the IRS gave guidelines on 2018 withholding rates, and they were all a little bit lower than they were in 2017 because of the new tax law. Um, we actually got those updated over the weekend, and all our customers that are running payroll this week are able to use those new lower tax rates um, because as soon as we updated our tax table, everything was pushed out. Um, to the customer databases um, automatically overnight. So we can get things done pretty quickly. Um, before I uh, throw it back to Kirk, I was just gonna see, Whit, is, is there anything that you think I should uh, touch on? One thing I was gonna, um, last thing I was gonna show is reports. And if there's anything else that you think we need to go over, please let me know. Um, the payroll report, I just wanted to quickly show that if you, um, elect not to have us do your uh, deposits and tax form filing, that's perfectly fine. We have the federal ones in here. So you have 941, 940, W2, W3. You can print them directly from uh, NAV payroll. And we also have a payroll report that's extremely flexible. So um, I'm gonna go and just show real quickly how you can add um, to this template. So you create, you just create a template with a code and you pick all the codes that you want to be part of that. And then it automatically groups those into a column. So if you wanna show, for example, all your employer contributions, or let's say all your deductions that are exempt from federal withholding, you need to show that to an auditor or something like that. Highlight those two codes, pick them, they come in here. I'm gonna call this deduction exempt. And then I'm going to pick this template into my payroll report. All the settings are going to automatically change to what's in my custom layout here. And then when I preview it, you can see that I've got my earnings, employer taxes, and now my new column uh, deductions that are exempt. And you can see one employee doesn't have any exempt deductions and the others do. Um, so another great thing about this is like if you need to build a template for some sort of deposit online deposit um, you can like the EFTPS deposit for example so I've made an EFTPS deposit anyone's familiar with that knows that they're going to ask you for three things social security uh, deposit Medicare federal withholding social security is going to be both sides the E and ER side um, same thing with Medicare and then federal withholding is just going to be how much federal um, income tax you withheld from that employee. Uh, so I have those lined up in the exact order that they're gonna be requested. Um, then I can also make this by employee, by posting group, by labor division, or by state. So I have several levels that you can do and you can subtotal it um, by those same things, or you can even in the subtotals, you can subtotal by year or by month. If you need to show someone a breakdown by month, um, you know, you can subtotal by month here and then it'll bring every, it'll take all your employees and make a total on each month automatically for you. So when I pick this into my payroll report, this changes to custom layout because that's what it is. The level is going to be employee that I'm looking at and it's going to pull off of ledger entries. You can also pull off of open documents. So if you want to check your payroll run before you post it, uh, you can um, pick open documents and check um, before you, uh, you know, post the full or print the checks and post the payroll run. So I'm going to preview this. So here it is in exactly what I need. So if I was going to EFTPS, I would put in that number, I'd put in that number, and put in that number. Those three numbers is all I would need, and I'd submit, and that would be it. And so, and then I'd have my backup here uh, for why I submitted those numbers. Um, there's also any type of filters down here that you need, document number, posting date, payment date, employee number, whatever it may be, you can filter on to get down to exactly the data you're looking for. So this is really kind of our go-to report um, because you can do almost anything with it. Um, and then uh, on top of that, you know, we have your standard um, 
personal information, wage information, all of these reports you cannot run unless you're set up in the payroll setup table as to be able to see personal information. So we have an extra layer of security on top of the standard NAV table security where you set up users to be able to see um, personal information and to be able to run certain things in the NAV payroll setup table. If they're not in there, they'll get an error as soon as they try to run the report just to say that they're not, um, uh, it's not, that information is not available for them to see. Um, so we've, we've tried to make it as, you know, as secure as it possibly can be. And I will show the NAS setup table real quick just to show you how that looks. It's as easy as adding your users right here, and then you can set them up to be able to reverse um, payroll documents, be able to see personal information, et cetera, all in here. You can make people uh, administrators of the hours, uh, the PTO hours. So if you want someone, you know, if the manager sometimes doesn't get to the approvals and you need someone to be able to see everything, you can check them off to be able to see um, all PTO requests there. Um, and just to show something that we touched on in the slides, I am going to go ahead and show the reversal. So you can, this is one of the transactions we just did. If you hit reverse transaction, it's going to bring in every single thing. Um, you can see how complicated it can be to reverse a payroll entry because, you know, you have hours that have been accrued, you have vendor ledger entries, you have GL, you have payroll, a ton of payroll ledger injuries, et cetera. Uh, but if you just hit reverse, then those automatically get reversed because of our programming. And then it checks it off as reverse, which remove it, removes it from a payroll ledger. So it doesn't delete it from a payroll ledger. It just checks it off as reversed. You can see right here, we have reverse set to no. If I uncheck that, then now all of those transactions that I just reversed are going to show back up here so you can have a history of what you reversed but it will not show um, by default in the payroll ledger you can also reverse multiple entries by selecting a document range so you can select the whole payroll period or just select a payment date that something went wrong on and then you can reverse all the entries associated with that okay i think that, that is about everything i had to show unless Wit or Kirk, you would like me to show something else, or if we have any questions uh, that I can address, I'd be glad to do that now as well. Okay, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll switch back over to me. Um, okay. And um, Okay, so thank you for that, Drew. You're very welcome. Um, so just a bit of review. So some of the things that Drew touched on here is the, you know, the employee cards and all the setups um, for withholding and that sort of thing, how to manage your tax tables and deductions um, where you're not really managing the tax tables, but, you, you know, how that is managed for you, um, how you're calculating and running payroll, some of the great features around reporting, which makes it very flexible for you to be able to generate your own reports. So kind of along the same theme as you're, you're probably familiar with with account schedules. You basically design the report and say, I want to group these things together, and this is how I want it to lay out for me. Um, and then obviously um, the other great feature with uh, being able to see your uh, labor cost reporting right in your item ledger, so you can do some additional analysis uh, from the system on that. Um, so just um, some further contact information. So you can actually obviously reach me at Kirk at BeckConsulting.com. Um, if you um, email our sales group, you'll reach our, our entire sales team with Cheryl and Mike, the group that you're familiar with. Um, our recordings are up on our website. So if you go to BeckConsulting.com, um, you click on the About Us drop down, you'll see ERP Unlocked. And then you'll see all of our webinars um, uh, from past that are, are will be loaded up there. And then this webinar, if anybody, your organization couldn't make it today and you saw some great features you'd like them to review, it'll be posted up there by the end of today. Um, so you'll have access to it there. So our next webinar um, will be um, the third week in February. I believe it's right after Valentine's Day on the 15th. Um, the invite will be going out to you shortly for that. And this is where we'll be taking, um, doing a bit of an intro into NAV 2018. So what to expect with the latest features of NAV 2018, which was released on December the 1st. Um, and, and we're in the process now of migrating all of BCERP into NAV 2018, and we'll be starting to implement that shortly. 
Um, so what I will do in uh, February is I'll, you know, take you through some of the features of 2018. Um, and that'll include, you know, looking at some of the different ways you can access NAV with a web phone, tablet or desktop client. Um, you know, talking about some of the closer integration that Microsoft's working on with the Office stack. Um, and then um, some other features in there, which is a, a nice one is the Accountant Hub. Um, which we'll talk about in that webinar where you, where you can really give access to NAV to some of your outside auditors and things like that. Um, so that's a nice little feature that's been added there as well. Okay, so that's our, our webinar for today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll put my email address up there again. Um, if you have any questions about NAV payroll, you want to know what, what that'll cost for your organization, please reach out to me, um, and we'll and we'll um, and we'll speak to you as as far as you know how many users you have and locations and things like that, and we'll we'll come up with a cost proposal for you if that's something you're looking for. Um, and if you have any questions about NAV payroll in general, please reach out to me, and then I'll um, I'll funnel those over to Drew and Wit. And one of the other advantages I I didn't mention about NAV payroll is that. Um, NAV Payroll is fully supported and implemented by Drew and his team at NAV Payroll. So we have the experts from NAV Payroll actually helping you with the implementation, the setup, and the support post go live as well. Um, so you're not relying on us to provide, you know, the expertise in payroll for you. And we provide the expertise for you in, uh, in the, on the food side. And we have the experts of NAV Payroll helping you with any of your payroll questions as well. So, you know, after the implementation of NAV Payroll, Drew and his team don't go away. They're there and accessible for you. Uh, to provide support on the system as well. Okay, so thank you again for attending. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And uh, thank you, Drew and Wit, for joining me today. And we look forward to seeing you next month on our uh, intro to NAV 2018. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you.